People of Reddit, what moment made you instantly think this is the moment I die? Story 28. 1969, Vietnam, in a bunker. Next year it will be 50 years, yet I still think of it each night before I go to sleep. Story 27. Snowboarding when I was 18. Took a nasty fall. My elbow hit my gut, knocked the wind out of me. Kept snowboarding for an hour as my gut still hurt. Brother drove me to the emergency room. Got me on the operating table and had to take a shit. Hot nurse gets my car hearts off, puts a bedpan under me. Two minutes later, I go blind and tell the nurse. She says your spleen is lacerated. You're in shock and your body is shutting down. Then yells for a dose of epinephrine and says we're losing him. That's cool. Came out of my mouth. This is when I knew this might be my finale. Handled it like a champ. Doctor later told me had I showed up 10 to 15 minutes later, they would have lost me. Yikes. That hot nurse who put a bedpan under me? Couple days later was on morphine and I hit on her. Told her that the fiance didn't love her as much as I would. Story 26. When I got my first electric toothbrush. True story. This was 20 years ago. I was about 15. My school was taking a trip and we were leaving very early in the morning. The bathroom was right next door to my parents' bedroom. The electric toothbrush was very loud. I figured I could close my mouth while operating it to muffle the sound. What resulted was the toothpaste foaming up really quickly while losing down my throat, effectively closing off my ability to inhale or exhale. The only thing that saved me was that I didn't panic. I realized what happened and despite the suffocating feeling, I turned the faucet on and put my head under it allowing water to rush down my throat and clear up the suds. Seemed like a long time and after nearly passing out, I coughed it all up. To this day, I'm extremely weary of electric toothbrushes. Story 25 was home alone and chocked on a bite of sandwich. Couldn't inhale, exhale, or cough for about 30 seconds before it dislodged. Seriously thought I was going to die alone eating a sandwich. Another quick one. I was in Peru on the beach alone and some guys walking towards me with machetes and bandanas. Not off to a great start. After they beat the blood into my piss and robbed me, they ripped my shirt off and the leader rested his machete on my shoulder. Then they just walked away. Lives a little brighter every day now, folks. Story 24 was entering the highway, doing about 55. I went to switch lanes to pass a semi and hit black ice. When I saw the median out of the windshield, I knew I was fucked. I heard. So this is how it ends in my head. Drop my hands into my lap and try to relax my body just in case I lived through whatever was about to happen. But the feeling of dread and doom in my gut said this was game over. The SUV flipped four times. Yes, four times. The roof was less than half an inch from crushing my skull when it finally stopped rocking. I literally walked away from that accident though I've had physical issues with my back, neck, and head ever since. Sadly, my dog was with me for that ride. He was thrown from the vehicle and severely cut up. A police officer took him to an emergency vet while I was taken to the emergency room. They had to put Bailey down. He was one of the bestest good boy. R.I.P. Pooch. Edit. When I was traveling north on 75 in Ohio in the middle of a snowstorm, surrounded by semi-trucks and everything electrical in my car died at once. I lost power steering, headlights, acceleration, everything. Story 23. I got blown up. I'm a volunteer firefighter and at a house fire. There was some kind of an explosion, likely a smoke explosion from what we could tell. We had been there quite some time, well past the point where a backdraft would be possible, but suddenly something wasn't sitting right with me about the situation. My partner and I were standing on the front stairs to the house. I looked at her and told her to pack up. She asked why and I said I don't like the look of this shit. I got my mask on and was on air. Turned back around and there was a wall of orange rushing towards me. It was an explosion. It blew me out of the front door where I was standing and down the steps. I stand 6 feet 1 inch and weighed about 280 pounds at the time. All I remember is I was looking up at the sky after having just been standing on the stairs. I was okay for the first few minutes, but after I walked away and was alone with my thoughts, I started trembling and shaking, realizing that I came moments away from quite possibly being horribly injured or killed. I don't know why my gut instinct told me to put my pack on, but I am so glad it did. Story 22 So, I'm from England. I live in the Midlands. A few weeks back I go to London. It's about 8 p.m. after a lovely day. My train is a few minutes away and I have to rush to get there. I open up my phone and Google takes me the fastest route. It takes me through an area of tower blocks past a basketball court full of black people fighting. This is the moment I die. Story 21 
I was driving pretty slow, and the guy behind me was getting pissed off. He was flipping me off, tailgating me, etc. It was a road where each side had one lane so he couldn't pass me. I decided to go slower since he was tailgating me and overreacting. He then took out a small black object. My heart skipped a beat and I thought I was about to get shot. Turns out, it was just his phone. But for a few seconds, I thought for sure it was a gun. Story 20 I was on a flight back to the US from Europe. We were about to land at O'Hare in Chicago, seconds from touching down on the ground. All of a sudden, the plane shoots back up into the sky. It was like the pilot pulled up as hard as he could. Turns out, another plane didn't get off of the runway in time and we were about to smash right into it. I don't remember the details because I was like 12 years old, but that shit was terrifying. When we finally landed, everybody gave the pilot a standing ovation. Story 19 had a plane get delayed for over an hour for a mechanical issue. When we were flying, we hit the worst turbulence I have ever felt, and I fly more than the average bear. The plane was literally dropping and people were coming out of their chairs. I thought we were going down. I was never scared of flying before, and now I always get nervous. Story 18 Used to eat peanut butter and raisins mixed together as a snack. Just spoonfuls of the mixture into my mouth. One day it got stuck down my throat. It somehow blocked me from getting air through my nose or mouth and it literally felt like several needles had embedded themselves into my throat. It wouldn't budge no matter how much I tried to work my throat. Panic set in and my heart felt like it would explode from pounding so hard. When the black spots started dancing over my vision, my exact thought was, This is such a stupid way to die. Somehow, the peanut butter glob slid down my throat far enough to suck in air through my nose. And if you can imagine it, I literally had to work my neck like a chicken to make the rest of the glob move down. I haven't eaten the peanut butter raisin mixture in about seven years, and I never will again. <laughs> Story 17 I got bite by a water moccasin while picking up a tire on the side of highway very far from a hospital with only a slow ATV as transportation. <laughs> Story 16 was in the passenger seat of a General Motors Chevy Trailblazer that was traveling at 90 miles per hour when S. Omeon pulled out in front of us and stopped. Brakes locked up. She snatched the wheel. The moment the tires left the pavement as we started our first flip, I remember thinking, fuck, this is it. We ended up on the roof. I had to climb back into the truck to drag the driver out as the ceiling was filling with gas. I somehow walked away with only a few scratches from crawling out of the glass. <laughs> Story 15. The senior trip in our school has always been to go backpacking through southern Argentina and Chile. I was never too keen on the idea, but every one of my siblings had gone, even the ones not too fond of nature, and every one of them told me it was one of the best trips they had done in their life. So, this December, my turn to go was up. One of the most physically demanding things we had to do was climb a mountain, which I already knew was going to be a bit tough, but I was certain I could handle it. After all, it was only about 8 kilometers of walking and 1, 5 km in elevation, and I'm used to walking. When the day came to climb that mountain, it was a gray day, and there was a slight drizzle, which didn't worry our guides much. It was really cold, about 10 degrees Celsius, and the rain wouldn't stop, but we charged ahead, not letting anything stop us. So we walked, for about six hours. Let me tell you, it was not an easy road to follow, and little by little, bridges made out of tree trunks and branches were starting to either drown in the slight but unrelenting drizzle or simply being drifted away by the current of the river flowing right next to the path. When you're in a group with all your friends, some of who you're not going to see again for a long time, chatting and laughing, you don't really pay attention to details, like the fact that little by little our feet were getting deeper and deeper into water because the path we were following was starting to flood, or that the river next to us was growing in size and in force by the minute. And by the time we did, it was too late. We were just about to hit the snow, just about to finish our walk and arrive at the shelter at the top of the mountain. All we had to do was cross the river that had been with us this whole time. Only then did we realize that because of all the rain it had gained such Force that it would be impossible to cross. We had to cross it by foot, with the help of a rock, so we had to go back. Thus, our descent started. Only by then, it had rained so much that the path we were following was completely swallowed by the river and the water was so deep that in some places we couldn't even walk because our feet didn't touch the ground. On top, the water of the river isn't just any kind of water. It's glacier water. The closest thing to ice there is. So, we were there, on a race against time because it kept raining, and we had to cross through bridges that were completely swallowed in water. We had to look for fallen trees and balance on them to get from one side to the other. The river had entered into the path, and we had to hurry because if we took too long we would literally be swallowed by the river and we'd froze to death. 
In that moment, I thought I was gonna die. I'm a very clumsy person and we had to balance on floating logs of wood to survive and I fell so many times and was told so many times to let go of my backpack in case I fell into the river and was so cold. I though that was it. It all just felt surreal, like I was on a survival reality show. And that's what it was, except for the show part. The flood was so intense that a person died, not from our group, trying to make it back down. Whenever I think about this, I can't believe I survived it and how stupid we were for not realizing earlier. Story 14 It was in the mid-80s, riding a bicycle to work during the morning rush hour, two lanes in the same direction. Speed limit is 35. A woman pulls ahead of me and turns right. Her bumper hooked my front tire and I flew off the bike into traffic. My life did not flash before my eyes, but I remember thinking, Shit, I really don't want to die right now. I heard tires squealing and popped up to get out of the road. The woman stopped about 20 feet down the road, got out of her car and said, Did I hit you? I could only numbly shake my head yes. Her response was a sing-song, sorry. She got back in her car and drove off. I had landed on my left elbow and left hip. It was about a month before I could walk without pain. Story 13 I was 17, fight with some close friends gone really wrong, ended up with a pole, in my hand versus a full on katana and ended up with my right wrist barely clinging onto the rest of my arm when my all spurting out blood as far as it had seemed to be 20 feet, I was sure I was dead that night by the amount of blood and other deep cuts. Thank God for our country's EMTs and doctors slash surgeons. Also shout out to the cop who almost shot me for refusing to unwrap the t-shirt around my wrist. And there's another one, literally two days ago. We were setting off fireworks, save it, I know the lecture, and one fell over, shot over to my husband and hit his leg, ricocheted over to me hit my leg, bounced up in the air and spun around and then exploded. I couldn't hear and everything felt like I was out of it. When I started to realize what happened I tried to nope the heck out of there, but everyone kept yelling at me to stop walking but I couldn't figure out why. Turns out my dress was on fire in the back. By the grace of God I only have road rash on my leg, same with my husband, and little burns on my back and butt. We have done this four years now. I have no clue what malfunctioned this year, but from now on I am watching the professionals do it. This will get buried, but I'll have a go. If my formatting is wrong, I blame my phone. I was in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan at a restaurant with some friends. At this particular restaurant, there were grills and the tables, and you ordered meat and grilled it yourself. My friend, and now boyfriend, decided to order the most outlandish thing on the menu, which was pig anus. That's right, it was the literal asshole of a pig, stretched out like a rubber band. There were testicles and penis, but no, the anus. Being good sports, myself and the other friend thought, fuck it. Might as well since we are here. It will make for a good story later. So these asshole elastic band rings were chewy as hell, and we found out that you just had to swallow the thing whole because no amount of chewing would break it up into pieces. Side note, apparently we couldn't even grill them properly. The waitress had to come over and show us how to cook a pig's asshole properly. So they didn't taste anything else other than the really fatty part of bacon, and the texture was something to be desired, but hey, new experience. Unfortunately, I have one of those permanent braces wires to the back of my bottom teeth to keep them in line. There was an edge exposed, and one end of the anus got stuck while I tried to swallow, which lead to roughly 75% of it blocking my throat. To put into perspective, these anus were stretched the fuck out. Think of a really overused elastic band that is on its last legs, then double that. So this entire thing was stopping me from breathing. I started seeing stars, panicked while choking and gagging, and struggled to free the anus from my wire all the while my life flashed before my eyes thinking this is it, this is how I die, choking to death on a fucking pig's asshole. I eventually got it free, eyes watering and gasping for air with my friends concerned. I immediately drank copious amounts of beer to wash the shame away and show the rest of the restaurant that was staring at me during the whole ordeal I was okay. Story 12 the first time I hydroplaned, I was 16, just got my license. First time driving by myself in the rain. I was speeding because I was a moron. I hit a bit of water while on a curve. I saw the railing coming up and the brakes weren't working. Luckily, I didn't overcorrect. So when I finally got past the puddle, I avoided impact. But that memory of being sure I was going to die has kept me driving safely since. It was about 6 a.m. on a Sunday, in the middle of rural Illinois. When Carl almost shot me, we were dropping pheasant with the hunt club. Maybe six guys in total on 50-acre cornfield in the dead if winter. There was nothing to block line of sight. 
One of the dogs flushed a pheasant about 15 feet to my left, angling towards me, and it decided to fly at about head height, way too low to take a shot at. So, being the good little hunter I am, I kept my shotgun pointed at the ground and turned to follow the bird's flight. About three seconds after the bird passed me, I heard the distinctive rustle of someone shouldering a gun. In that moment, I knew what a deer felt like when it stares into the headlights. I was absolutely certain that one of my buddies was about to blow my head off, and I could not move. Time slowed down, and I saw the shot fly past my face, not three feet in front of me. Everyone froze, and I think it took me about five seconds to yell, Jesus fucking Christ. I spun to see who had almost shot me, and everyone was staring at Carl. He was frozen in place, about ten yards behind me and to me left, right where the shot would have come from. For a second, I wanted to shoot him. I really did. I was filled with some kind of primal rage that demanded I do something about what just happened. Instead, I just pointed at my bright orange vest and screamed, You don't shoot at orange shit, Carl. How fucking hard is that? He had a gratifying mixture of horror and mortification etched onto his face. I didn't really stay to revel in it though. I just kind of stormed off, clearing my gun as I went. I just told the guys that I was leaving and pulled out of there as calmly as I could. Carl stopped coming to drops after that, which is fine by me. Story 11 there's a gun show that happens frequently near the shooting range where I work. Predictably, lots of people buy their guns and want to immediately test them out. This obviously creates a situation with a high density of firearms and shooters with a low density of training and experience. So one gun show Sunday, I was working my turn as the safety officer inside the range. I had identified a pair of guys who were very nice and enthusiastic, but obviously inexperienced. They got a lot of my attention. They were busy loading up a magazine when I got a question from another shooter. So I felt okay diverting my focus for a second. I answered the question and meanwhile heard my two newbies load up their gun and fire two shots. Then stop. The shooter told his buddy. Man, see, I think these sights aren't working right. I can't hit shit. I knew something was wrong. Sure enough, the shooter was holding his loaded gun sideways, finger on the trigger, pointed right at my guts as he inspected the sights. I gently body checked him as I grabbed the gun and pointed it down range. We then had a very serious conversation about firearm safety and the fact that he needed to take a class or two. He was very apologetic and ashamed. I don't think I've told my wife this story. Story 10 August 13th, 2004, at approximately 3. 15 p.m. I was living in Port Charlotte, Florida, less than a mile from the Gulf Coast. Hurricane Charlie had made landfall, and the eye was passing over my house. I was in the bathtub, in a mason block brick house, and I could feel the entire house moving. I could feel the pressure changing. I heard destruction all around as the storm tore through the area, while the radio warned anyone in the area listening to hunker down. I sat there waiting for the house to collapse on me. My only hope was that they found my body quickly so my mother wouldn't have to worry long if I had survived or not, because I knew any moment would be my last. Then, the eye passed directly over. It was calm, peaceful, still. The destruction outside my home is difficult to describe, even all these years later. Story 9 White Water Rafting in Colorado Decided midway through to use the inflatable kayak the guide had. Was fine until literally the last set of rapids that were probably a class 4 and I'm used to about a 3. Navigate them just fine until the last stretch that basically spins my nose and tosses me in the river. I'm instantly shocked to the bottom about 10 to 15 feet down. It was much deeper than I expected. The second I realized I was at the bottom of the river, I had one single thought cross my mind. If you panic, you die. I've been tossed and swam in rapid before, but this was something else. Had to fight to get to the surface while making sure I didn't get trapped or pinned by any rocks or debris underwater. Finally get to the surface and I'm under the kayak so can't break the surface. Finally get the kayak out for over me and break the surface about a minute after I've been under. I manage to collect all .my gear and the kayak, link up with my party behind me, and get to shore, all without losing the sunglasses off my head the whole time. Once on the shore the guide asks me again if I'm okay. I say I'm fine but it was intense. He nods and asks if I think I could have done it without the life vest. I tell him maybe but it would have been much harder. He then quietly tells me a kid died in that exact spot one week ago that day. I wasn't surprised but was spooky. Story 8. I went tubing on my birthday, and the boat that was pulling me created a huge wave. I saw it coming. Image falling off a cliff but made of water. So that happened and my tube flipped over and I was thrown underwater. I was pretty disoriented and I couldn't tell which direction was up, but luckily I was wearing a flotation divide. Forgot what it's called. But they're the orange vests, and it pulled me up with such force until my head was above the water. Floats save lives, y'all. Lots of people don't like to wear them, but you never know when it could help you. Story 7. 
When I was 12 years old, I was being prepped for surgery and given a topical numbing medication called EMLA cream. About five minutes after application, I went into anaphylactic shock. I remember everything around me turning a purple slash blue hue and falling backwards thinking that I was a goner. I regained consciousness a few hours later hooked up to multiple wires with a nurse and my surgeon standing over me. Story 6 the moment an auger had my foot and was pulling me in, half of me would have stayed up in the bin and half of me would have come out the end of the auger and into another bin. Kid below heard me screaming and finally hit the emergency stop. Story 5 I pissed off my boyfriend at the time, now ex, by choosing to do something with my mom over him. He beat me senseless all over his bathroom floor, he even dislocated my thumb. I remember thinking, Yep, this is the one where he kills me. Story 4 I got extremely crossfade at a recent Slayer show in SoCal. I ended up in the middle of the pit and couldn't handle myself from being so fucked up and also, I was alone. And I'm a 5 inch 2 girl. I ended up getting pushed around so hard that I was physically exhausted. It felt like I ran 5 miles. I desperately needed a way out but there were hundreds of people around me and I was fucked up beyond belief. After trying to get my way out, I ended up having to go through a huge mosh pit. And I got shoved so hard I literally pissed myself and ended up on the floor. I was covered in my own piss and two guys stopped and pulled my arms so I could stand but I immediately Immediately fell back on the floor. Couldn't move in the middle of popo punching and running around. The last song started, which was the song everyone was waiting for, and I couldn't see from sensory overload from the fire slash pyrotechnics slash strobe lights. Thought I was gonna die there from getting my throat stop mid on, but luckily everyone made room for me after these guys who tried to help wouldn't leave me on the ground. Defenseless. I learned my lesson that day. Never get fucked up at a show by yourself. But for a brief moment in time, I thought I was done for. Story 3. Nearly committed suicide on my 12th birthday. I had brought cupcakes to school that day for the class, and everyone refused to eat them. When I asked my classmates why they didn't eat any, one popular girl responds, Because no one likes you. Yeah. Her and her friend group start cracking up. While I go crying in the bathroom for the rest of recess, I came home crying hysterically. My mom nearly dialed 911 a few times. Story 2 Story 1 Got on a ride with my sister at the Milwaukee Fair once. My buckle for some reason didn't work. It was one of those rocking pirate ship things, but it went all the way around. Every time the thing would go upside down, I'd fall like two feet out of the seat. Everyone else was just chilling as I was hanging on for dear life to the bars above me. My sister and everyone else seemed fine, so I just stayed still and tried to not to scare everyone. I was convinced I was going to be the next kid on the news for dying at a carnival. Yeah! Thanks for watching! And make sure to click the subscription button for more, more, and more fragging stories. Hope to see you soon. Bye, bye, boys.